This image I referred to earlier of the earth as one bowl with one spoon captivated me. We only have one earth, just like we only have one of each individual persons. Our sacred earth is not replaceable, just as no person is ever replaceable. And we know painfully well what happens when we don't take care of the earth and of people. And so we come together week after week to find hope and resurrection in Jesus for our world, seeking better ways of caring for all of creation. We turn to God's Word, asking the Holy Spirit to change our hearts and our behaviors to better reflect the character of God in and for our world. We are made in the image of God, reflecting the very nature of God. We have the capacity and the calling to care for all of creation in a way the Creator would care for it, which is through loving relationship. I think about my grandfather who sought to care for creation and protect our land as a Kentucky wildlife and conservation officer. My mom told me of her last memory with her dad. He took her and her brother out the evening of August 6, 1947, to check his fishing lines. My mom was eight and her brother was nine. Her dad loved being outdoors and shared that love with his kids. It started to storm and once they were on the river, they came back home drenched from the rains. My mom remembers she and her brother lying beside their dad, one on each arm, filling the room with joyous laughter. That was her last memory with her dad. The next morning, he took his bird dog, Queen, and he left before sunrise to enter into the woods of Butler County, Kentucky to protect the land. He was not mutually protected. We don't know to this day as to who or why someone took his life on August 7th, 1947. On that hot August day, the grandfather, I never knew, was taken from me and our family, a precious and powerful part of creation. Just as I find ways to reclaim what was stolen from my family, we as a church are called to responsibly reclaim and lovingly restore that which has been stolen from our world. To do what we can to recover as much of what is lost by time and neglect. I believe we can do this by extending the loving relationship we receive from our Creator God to one another and to all of creation. Here's the reality. God extends to each one of us God's perfect love. It's, it's the only way God loves perfectly. And that perfect love has clear boundaries so that harm is less likely to occur. My grandfather sought to uphold clear boundaries as a Kentucky wildlife and conservation officer. Loving boundaries are reflected in the scripture we read today. We see that God calls us to be responsible for the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the land we live on. We are called to embody the very presence of God with loving relationships. While caring for creation is certainly a part of some political agendas, make no mistake, caring for creation is the very first agenda of our scripture in Genesis 1. So let's look at Genesis 1, verses 26 through 31 together. God spoke, Let us make human beings in our image. Make them a reflection of our nature so they can be responsible for the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the surface of the earth. 
God created human beings. God created them godlike, reflecting God's nature, and created them male and female. God blessed them and said, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take care of it all. Be responsible for the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I give you every sort of seed bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit bearing tree given them to you for food, to all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes. Give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. And God looked over everything God had made. And it was so good. So very good. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to focus on two central themes of this passage our capacity to care for creation, and our calling to care for creation. Because we are made in the image of God, reflecting the very nature of God, then we have both the capacity and the calling to care for all of creation in the very way our Creator cares. Our capacity and our calling exist because of the loving relationship God extends to us. I think about my grandfather who extended a loving relationship with the land and sought to protect it and share it with those he loved. Our capacity comes from being made in God's image, as well as from what we have received from those who came before us. Our ancestors are those native to our land. They loved and respected creation in ways in which we are not fully acquainted. In the book, Braiding Sweetgrass, Native American author writes, the earth is a gift that we must pass on just as it came to us. We are called to be responsible for all we've been given, for all that we've taken. Our capacity to care for creation has within it a calling. She further writes, it's our turn now to give back to this land and it's long overdue. Let us give gifts of mind, hands, heart, and voice, and vision all offered up on behalf of the earth. Whatever our gift, we are called to give it as a dance for the renewal of the world in return for the privilege of breath. The earth is as one bowl and one spoon. We take care of our sacred earth, one another and ourselves, so that we can continue to breathe. God breathed life into each part of creation, gifting us with relationship with one another and the sacred earth. Being created in God's image gives us the capacity and capability to imitate God's care for creation as a church by being in a loving relationship with the earth. And when you're in loving relationship, you want to find ways to best care for that relationship. So we're here seeking to grow in greater awareness of our sacred earth and our relationship to it. Because if we don't, we are allowing the relationship with our land to be stolen from us and future generations. Just like someone took my grandfather's life, our family and their community were robbed of that relationship with him. So I want us to consider how we can grow in awareness and practice more loving ways of caring for all of creation. Here at Prince of Peace, I can think of many examples of how We extend this loving relationship in our church community. We use our minds to think deeper, ask questions, to study and learn, create solutions, 
to problems and dream visions for future generations. The ELCA has established a statement for caring for creation, and we as a church have affirmed this statement, which calls us to reflect God's nature and care for sacred earth. This involves honoring creation and striving for fairness within our communities, which is communicated to us directly from God's Word. You can find copies of this document on our website under Worship Resources. We use our hands to play musical instruments, paint, draw, or take beautiful pictures, build and fix things, pack meals for Feed My Starving Children, plant and harvest our community garden, pick up trash, recycle used materials like bringing our old coffee mugs to share and reuse for Sunday morning coffee. Did you know that we have been using ceramic cups for a year, which has kept 18,200 styrofoam cups out of landfills? We also share donations of food and clothing and furniture. We make prayer blankets and diapers. We cook food for nourishment. We give hugs, smiles to one another. We open doors. We help one to raise to their feet or push a wheelchair. We use the gift of our voices to sing, to pray, to teach, to share with one another encouraging words and communicate love. All this is good news, but we can grow in our capacity and calling. Let's recommit ourselves as a church family to grow in our relationship with God, reflecting God's nature and caring for creation. Genesis 1 reminds us we are created in God's image. And because of how we are created, our relationship with God informs and leads us in giving lovingly to all creation. Even when I feel overwhelmed about the needs of the world, I'm reminded instead of getting stuck in shame and blame and anger because of all the harm that's been done to the world, I'm reminded to consider how to be more loving in relationships and be the best version of ourselves in and for our sacred earth. As we look to scripture and our role in caring for all God has created, we as a church can join our one voice with each other's voice and make a difference. I'd like to suggest a couple of ways we can reflect the image of God and caring for our earth. One, consider learning or reading one new thing we can do to replenish creation for what she has so continuously and graciously given to us. Maybe host a small group to read together the book I've referenced today, Braiding Sweetgrass. Seek other classes watch documentaries, read books, listen to podcasts, have a study group to increase our awareness of our world's needs and how we can care for our world. Two, commit to adding one new practice or lifestyle change to reflect God's nature and care for this sacred space. For example, you might plant a tree, a garden, or flowers to attract pollinators. And when you break open the ground to put something alive into the earth, pause, give thanks to our Creator for the soil that gently holds and creates more new giving life. God's character, God's very nature is in loving relationship with all of creation. And this clarifies our capacity and our calling to lovingly nurture our relationships with all around and within us, nurturing our relationship with the land, with others, with ourselves and our Creator God. We refill the bowl by giving back. We plant seeds to new places to grow and multiply them by our care for them so they don't dwindle from neglect. And this is what loving relationship looks like. It's a pact of mutual responsibility to sustain the earth who sustains us. And so the empty bowl is filled by our response 
to the calling for us to be one voice in loving relationship with our one and only sacred earth. Will you pray with me? God of all creation, we pause to be aware of how grateful we are for giving us life, for giving us our minds, our hearts, our voices, our hands to give back. And so we ask that you create in us your continued life-giving love to make all things new. Thank you for growing your love and your presence within us. We trust in you that you will continue to bring life in us and in our world as we seek to recommit our hearts in loving relationship to you, ourselves, and the sacred earth. In Jesus' name we pray.